Home Secretary has redoubled efforts to clamp down on crime. She's pledged her full support to police officers and uh, called for what she called ramping up stop and search powers. In a letter to all police chiefs across England and Wales, Suella Bravman telling forces the dangerous carrying of weapons has to come to an end, she said. She's also called on officers involved in altercations to publish their body cam footage quickly to avoid facing what she called trial by social media. But opponents of stop and search have pointed to its unfair targeting of ethnic minorities, the Labour Party accusing the Home Secretary of chasing headlines. Let's get more now with uh, Norman Brennan, retired police officer of 31 years and founder of Knives Destroy Lives, who can join us once more. Norman, thank you for your time. Um, I know a lot of uh, police officers and former police officers have been questioning what does ramping up actually mean? Well, I've been in law and order uh, for 45 years. I've been a serving police officer 31 years, and knife crime has been a topic of uh, interest to me for all of those years. I've heard so many home secretaries and uh, the London mayor promise a clampdown, and then Theresa May uh, told the Met Police and police in to reduce the stop and search. The London mayor threatened to take the Metropolitan Police to court over their use of stop and search. He now realises that stop and search is an important tool in the police tool uh, box. Let me just take up, Mark, um, something that always crops up, and it's never changed in the 45 years that I've been in policing and law and order. Why do we stop and search people? Well, we stop and search people because we suspect that they may be carrying a knife, a weapon to commit crime, or an illegal property idea, items to commit a burglary or theft. Now, in London, let's take London because often the Met are criticised. Let me tell you the reality of knife crime. 62% of serious crime, that is knife crime, gun crime and homicides, are committed against black Londoners. The offenders of these crimes, of knife crime, gun crime and also homicide, is 65%. We're looking at those stats. If you were a police officer or the Met Police or any force around the country and you had those stats, what type of person would you be stopping? 65 to 70 percent of all crime, serious crime in London, is committed by predominantly young black men. Who would you target? And who, and who criticised the police? It's the same narrative yeah. I've heard for um, decades. Um, and it's therein, the therein, yeah, sorry. just to sorry interrupt you, no, therein lies the political sensitivity and difficulties and the allegations of, of racial profiling uh, and communities being unfairly targeted, as they, as they would say. And, of course, the problem having been, as you've indicated, the policies have, have gone in and out over the years, and perhaps the critics are saying that the stop and search has failed to address that very problem of knife crime. Well, has it? Uh, in the last three years, 37,000 knives have been seized by the police. 37,000. Possibly 37,000 lives may have been saved, certainly that of the offender or the victim, and those knives have been taken out of the hands of offenders. Now, the public have got to ask themselves, what is it that they want the police to do? The primary role of a police officer is to protect society, keep the peace, prevent crime, and challenge those that commit crime and arrest them. Now, as I said to you, the narrative is this. If we actually spent as much time, Mark, talking about knife crime and the number of parents, predominantly black parents, now planning funerals instead of futures, like we do about Boris Johnson and all the other side issues, we might actually start tackling the knife crime. You're right, they're all headline-grabbing gimmicks. Well, not only have I been a police officer, in my 31 years, I stopped and searched hundreds of suspects. Many of them were black. I was in London. I disarmed uh, up to six people that had knives. I was, a, I, was a, I was actually assaulted and injured by two. One almost cost me my life. I now dedicate myself to helping families of homicide. And guess what the homicide rate is? Predominantly by knives. These families in London, predominantly black families, plead with the police to do something to ensure that their child lying in a mortuary slab six feet away do everything and anything.
What, but let, let me doing, return to this to phrase these that the Home want. Secretary has used, ramping up. Uh, and there are those police officers and former police officers who said, well, the problem is you still need the due cause and the suspicion. So how do you actually alter the law to ramp up a policy that has to follow the guidelines? Well, it's an emotive word. In policing, we follow suspects. When I was in a robbery squad for six years, every day I came in, I looked at the crime reports. I looked at the descriptions. I looked where the crime actually happened, what uh, words were used, what weapons. Many robbers actually wear the same clothes all the time. So what we do is we follow the robbers because in general, these robbers commit robberies day in and day out on the same routes. They wear the same clothes. They tackle often lone young males or lone women. So that is what we do. We don't need the word ramping up. Police actually go out and actively try and stop people. And many of my colleagues have been stabbed. They've been threatened with knives. They've been injured. And some have nearly been murdered. I was one of them. I know the realities of knife crime. And all those that have got the narrative of hatred towards the police, which uh, 